to take a look at the variety of finishes or approaches that Bouguereau has used during his career. Uh, his paintings were not always painted in the same way or finished in the same way. And I want to take a look at some examples of that. We're lucky to have access to some really beautiful high-res images. And if you take a look at this head here, uh, we can see how everything is very solidly painted. You can see various thickness of paints. We can take a look at edges where he has it a bit softer. Uh, there's a little bit of variety where it's a bit sharper just so that it doesn't look too cut out. What we don't see is any of the underpainting peeking through. Um, we can see all the parts, including the shadows, which often are left thin, painted very solidly. There's a really wonderful interplay here between these green half tones and the uh, pinks of the flesh. Then if we look at other paintings, more towards the end of his career, such as this uh, head here, we can see a variety of finishes, not just a solidly painted head, but we see the layering, we see some of the ground coming through, we see underpainting coming through, and it really activates the surface and makes it really interesting to look at. It seems pretty consistent that in the later part of his career, his work seemed to almost take a little bit of an influence of the Impressionists on a much uh, looser play of brush strokes and uh, really interesting paint application. If we take a look here at the flesh on the painting here in the bottom right, it in a sense looks a little more lifelike than the painted flesh that we looked at a little bit earlier. You know, the splotchiness coming through is much more accurate than this kind of nice, even finish. And if you look at other paintings, such as this other head here, he kind of plays between those two extremes, that really solid finish versus that a lot more splotchy and painterly look. This is something here of a a via de mezzo, a move, uh, kind of in between the two extremes. So this one is definitely overpainted solidly, but not quite as uh, smooth as the first head we looked at. This one has a little bit more sense of the splotchiness, but with a, f a finer finish than the one on the right there. So we take a look here at this third head, we can see that it too is pretty solidly painted. And then if we take a closer look, it seems like he's gone over that solid underpainting or solid final painting and then patched in some colors over top. So in this particular piece, we don't really see much of the underpainting. We see the solid final painting or overpainting. And then on top of that is glazing and scumbling and patching of colors to get that patchy look. Yet when we um, pull back from the painting and take a look at how it looks from a bit of a distance, it all just comes together. So in these four examples, we kind of see four different uh, approaches or kind of variations on approaches to uh, painting the flesh that we see at different uh, stages in his career. And all four of them work very well. I think the hardest to pull, out, pull off successfully would be this one here. We have this uh, scrappiness and splotchiness that looks uh, up close, very painterly. And yet, when you pull back, it all just kind of fits together and makes a beautiful image. This one here is probably a little more on the labor intensive side in sense to get that um, full range of blendings it does take time and uh, really just kind of fiddle away until your heart's content. <laughs>